explained that he had seen an interview of me in his local paper, and that the sight of my father's name had brought back a rush of memories. That, during the course of our conversation, he repeated the same story that my grandfather had told, about the white man who had tried to purchase my father's forgiveness. I'll never forget that, the man said to me over the phone. And in his voice, I heard the same note I heard in Graham so many years before. That note of disbelief. Miscegenation. The word is humpbacked, ugly, portending a monstrous outcome, like antifellum or octoroon. It evokes images of another era, the distant world of horse whips and flames, dead magnolias and crumbling porticos. And yet it wasn't until 1967, the year I celebrated my sixth birthday, that Jimi Hendrix performed in Monterey. Three years after Dr. King received the Nobel Peace Prize, in a time when America had already begun to weary of black demands for equality, the problem of discrimination was simply solved. The Supreme Court of the United States began around to telling the state of Virginia that its ban on interracial marriages violated the Constitution. In 1960, the year that my parents were married, miscegenation still described a felony in over half the states in the Union. In many parts of the South, my father could have been strung up from a tree from merely looking at my mother the wrong way. In the most sophisticated of northern cities, the hostile stares, the whispers, might have driven a woman in my mother's predicament into a back alley abortion, or at the very least to a distant comment that could arrange for adoption. Their very image together would have been considered lurid and perverse, a handy retort to the handful of soft-headed liberals who supported the civil rights agenda. Sure, but would you let your daughter marry one? The fact that my grandparents had answered yes to this question, no matter how grudgingly, remains an enduring puzzle to me. There was nothing in their background to predict such a response. No New England transcendentalists or wild-eyed socialists in their family tree. True, Kansas had fought on the Union side of the Civil War. Grams like to remind me that various strands of the family contained ardent abolitionists, 